human society has experienced with reproduction and birth, since that's how families and societies continue across time. So pregnancy must be the same around the world, right? Wrong! Today we'll tell you about the wide range of global experiences of pregnancy, from cultural food restrictions to various ways of giving birth across cultures. Let's get started! Around the world, societies have wide-ranging beliefs about the appropriate foods to eat during pregnancy to ensure good health. In their text on medical anthropology, Wiley and Allen describe how, in Southeast Asia, pregnancy is seen to be cooling on the body, and strongly heating foods such as papaya, pineapple, and pumpkin should be avoided by pregnant women. Women in southern India also often have a cultural preference for lighter-skinned babies, so they are to told to avoid dark-colored foods and focus on white and yellow foods. In Western and Central African countries such as Gambia, Nigeria, Gabon, and the Democratic Republic of the Congo, pregnant women are generally forbidden from consuming very rich foods such as animal proteins and fats. This is mainly because of the fear that the child may have bad health, the woman's labor may be delayed because of her large baby, or the idea that certain foods can, can induce constant menstruation, causing infertility. While pain during childbirth is a given, Women from a wide range of cultures experience it differently. In various countries around the world, giving pain birth without painkillers is an ideal for mothers. It is a Japanese cultural belief, for example, that enduring pain while giving birth will prepare mothers for the challenging role of motherhood. In highly developed Western European countries, epidurals are rare and women most commonly give birth with no pain medicine. The decision on getting or not getting pain medicine is just one example of the medicalization of pregnancy and birth which is when a culture begins to treat pregnancy as a medical condition, something to be handled by doctors, rather than handling it in female social settings like was common up until the 20th century. Midwives are trained in helping women give birth, and they were the primary form of birth care up until the last century. The new medicalization of birth presents in different ways. For example, in Brazil, the rate of C-sections is 55%, and in private hospitals, the rate rises to 84%. Women with fewer than 7 years of formal education have a 40% C-section rate, while women with more than 12 years of formal education have an almost 80% C-section rate. In Brazil, social class is highly tied to one's access to private health care and likelihood of choosing to have a C-section. As opposed to vaginal births, C-sections can be scheduled just like any other elective surgery, meaning women can pick their doctors and doctors can manage their busy schedules. For comparison, the C-section rate in the U.S. is 33%, which is considered high by the WHO. However, C-sections are not prevalent in every culture globally. Some women from low- and middle-income countries with high HIV rates are afraid of C-sections based on the possibility of needing a blood transfusion and contracting HIV. This demonstrates that pregnancy and birth are experienced differently around the world. The most common and respected medical interventions in one culture could be unheard of in another. We hope you learned, enjoyed learning more about pregnancy and childbirth with us. Just remember, while everyone in the world reproduces, we all do it differently.